In this jazz guitar lesson, we're gonna explore the genius licks and lines of Joe Pass. Hi, my dear jazz guitar aficionados around the globe, Sandra Sherman here. Greetings from Austria. I'll dissect and show you Joe Pass's trademark licks. You'll learn how he used superimpositions, uh, augmented arpeggios, and his passion for sharp 11th intervals. I'll teach you note for note, slow and easy, and there is a slow and a fast playthrough for each of these licks and uh, licks. I've made tabs and backing tracks, which you can download from one of the links down below in the description box. Actually, the tabs include two bonus licks. So grab them now. It's an instant download and you gotta hit return to merchant in order to get your instant download. All right, let's get some Joe Paslicks under our fingers. lick is in C mixolydian so it's played over a C7, C9 or C13 chord all right and I know that Joe Pass um, thought a lot in chords and you can perfectly see that in the first line it's a short and easy line but it's so effective all right uh, I think he visualized the following chords C9 here because he starts on the uh, third here. Actually, C7 would do it too. That's the third of the chord. He starts with that. He plays triplets, chromatic. Actually, that uh, belongs to the scale, but it's the avoid note. Here is the chromatic, and it leads perfectly to the fifth of the chord, the C7 here. So this is one triplet, two. He's on chord tones when uh, a new beat is there on each beat. One, two is the chord tone. Then he goes back. And on count number three, he's on the chord tone again. And now he plays a little scale. He goes back to eights, by the way. And here is the seventh of the chord, right? And that's all there is to it, to it. Easy but uh, effective. Let's listen to that at a uh, slow tempo. Our second Joe Pass lick is a 2-5-1 in the key of B flat major and he's not, he doesn't really alter the 5 chord. A little bit, but not too much. Alright, uh, C minor. He starts really simple with the 3rd uh, of the chord, that's an E flat. Goes to the 5th of the chord, a lot of chord tones here. That's the ninth, so it just plays Dorian, the uh, uh, corresponding scale. And now it gets interesting. He thinks this chord. That's actually a C minor major 9 ending chord. At the end of a tune we often play when we have C ma minor, we play this C minor major chord. There's no C in there because it actually is also an E flat major sharp 5 7 sharp 5 chord E flat major 7 sharp 5 chord this chord is derived from the third degree of the uh, C melodic minor scale so instead of C Dorian he now thinks a uh, melodic minor scale and he uses a superimposition and this chord gives us the overall impression of a C minor major 9 chord right Now 
now it's for the five chord the F7 and as I said he doesn't really alter it he now thinks C minor major 7 and here we have a C minor 7 chord and here's the major 7th on the 7th fret C minor major 7 arpeggio over F7 what does that give us? that's the 5th of the F 7th of the F 9th of the F so F9 sharp 11 and Joe loved sharp 11s that's this chord actually F9 sharp 11 then he slides to a regular minor pentatonic C minor pentatonic oops which is just uh, okay which is a regular thing you can do over an F uh, on altered chord just continue playing in the C minor pentatonic all right and now the resolution he slides to uh, the G which is we're in B flat now the 13th or 6th of B flat and he resolves to the root afterwards on one end most uh, bebop phrases end on one end or two end actually on two end this one ends on one end and this is a sixth this is the interval of a sixth and that's perfect for ending I love this and just see how he moved horizontally from the third fret all the way up to the twelfth fret uh, also play doesn't matter all right and here's the entire phrase at slow tempo is a 5-1 G7 altered to C7 unaltered like C7, C13 whatever so uh, and he plays it in double time so have 1 E and E, 2 E and E, 3 E and E, 4 E and E, uh, 16th notes very fast Joe played in double time a lot so here's the uh, altered scale G altered scale which he used, he starts, here's G7 sharp 9 or flat 9, he starts on the root and he connects all the altered scale, scale tones um, with chromaticism. Chromatic on the 11th, flat 7th, chromatic, pulls off to the flat 13 which is a scale tone, the third of the chord, he's here, now he encloses the root by going uh, chromatic from above, that's the flat ninth, chromatic from below, does not belong to the scale, and he slides into the root. That in itself is a perfect entire bar of eight notes, five to one. One and two and three and four and one, this would be the five of the C. But he's still in G because he plays double time. One E and E, two E and E, three. Right, now he goes to the next uh, pattern. He goes to the D, which is not in the altar scale actually. And he goes to the sharp 11th on the 11th fret. And this, as I said, Joe loved sharp 11th. And um, he rested here, which is a little bit unusual to rest on a sharp 11 that long. And now he has three more notes left and he anticipates the uh, upcoming C7 already uh, with a uh, C7-9 chord arpeggio. C is the root, D is the ninth. Here you go. Sorry, you didn't see that. 
E is the third, G is the fifth of the chord. And then he resolves it to the seventh. So that's just a perfectly fine C9 arpeggio. And the phrasing is, he slides into that. Alright, let's listen to that um, at slow tempo. Welcome to lick number four of the Cho Pass lines, and uh, it's played over a B flat altered chord, resolving to an E flat minor. So this is a 5 1 in minor. And he plays it double time. He uses augmented chords, and that makes it pretty hard to play. But I show you how to make it a little easier with your right hand. Okay? B flat altered, entire bar. He plays a B flat triad, starts really simple, inversion. D, F, B flat. That's the B flat triad inversion. And he alternate picked it or sweeped it, and I played hybrid picking pick, middle, ring. Because that's so much faster. You know? Sweeping is okay too, but I'm not really a good sweeper. Alternate picking is the slowest, right? So then, nothing special here, and now he goes to an E augmented chord. Root, major third, and sharp five. Now in relation to the B flat, we get Sharp 11 or flat 5, Joe's favorite uh, tone. Then the 7th of the B flat, and this is the 9th of the chord. So it features a 9 sharp 11 chord, which we already had in, in one of the previous licks. Right? Now he does an F sharp augmented arpeggio, F sharp. A sharp, D, and here you go. That's the same shape, but when you're on B string, you need to uh, get the B string one to the right. And this gives us, in compare, uh, in relation to the B flat, you get the sharp five, the root, and the third. So he used sharp fourth. Or, or 11th and sharp 5s a lot, right? Now he noodled around a bit. E, that's the uh, sharp 4 again. F sharp is sharp 5 again and back to the E. And now he makes a pull off to E flat and he's still in B flat altered. Those are the last three tones, you get four tones, sorry and he anticipates the upcoming E flat minor chord already by making that uh, pull off to the E flat and he plays the triad now, E flat minor triad inversion. Here's the E flat or here's also one. That's an E flat minor triad and he goes down it, descends it. And then a pickup, that's a, just a regular chromatic. And now it's the E flat chord. And he's on the third of the E flat minor chord. And plays a E flat minor 9 arpeggio, or actually it's a G flat uh, major 7 superimposition. B flat, D flat, F. All right. And uh, let's play that super slow first before I've played with the playback. Chord 
change. All right, and now let's play it with the playback. If you want to expand your lick library, you may want to check out my Charlie Parker licks tutorial up here on YouTube. I have so many tutorials up here, chord melodies, solo lessons, whatever you want, there will be something here for you. So please go give this video a fat thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I see you next week. Servus, bye bye.